We're going to intro. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts Live, uh, brought to you by Right Guard Extreme Defense 5, because green is the color of money. Damn right. What's going on, guys? How you doing? Awesome. <laughs> What's happening? Robbie, right. Beastly, I hope you guys are doing well. I haven't talked to you all week. Beastly, I talked to you a little bit earlier, but you were level 31, so I ditched you promptly. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, so, yeah, what have you guys been playing? Let's talk about what we've been playing this week. Well, I've been playing some, of course, some Last of Us whenever I get a little bit of uh, time. I put in quite a few hours on Destiny this week. Uh, my wife and I have really been enjoying the uh, Prison of Elders. We just go through there over and over and over again just to see what kind of new loot you're going to get. Uh, I've been playing Elder Scrolls Online, PlayStation 4. Uh, and I've been playing, uh, finally, for the first time, some Dead Rising 3 on my Xbox One. All and right. so that's way back in the day, but it's new to me, so I wanted to try it out and see see if I liked it or not. And uh, it's it's an okay game, but yeah, I've, I've had a really great week playing games. I, I've done a lot of streaming this week. Uh, we were streaming on Twitch last night. Kate and I are playing uh, some Destiny together. We played some Last of Us together, and we played some uh, Elder Scrolls Online together. And we had quite a few people watching. So if any of you guys are watching, what's up? All right, I got some questions for you, but first, a word from our sponsor, Right Guard Extreme Defense 5, because you want to smell good, you know? <laughs> Did you not even let us know about the sponsorship? You just straight up <laughs> acquired it without letting us know? Before you go on, a word from our sponsors, Red Bull. It gives you codes. <laughs> oh, my God. Beastly Doss is doing it, man. We're doing it. We all right, I got some questions for you, Beastly, before we move on. First of all, how are you enjoying Prison of Elders? Do you like it? It's a three-man co- It's three man content. It's a little different than what you're used to with the raids. How are you enjoying the Prison of Elders? I absolutely love the Prison of Elders. I love how every single map gives you something a little bit different, like uh, your primary weapons might work better. Melee attacks might work better, give you more damage. Mid-air attacks, I love how they change that up. I love the very uh, incredibly difficult boss at the end. I love the fact that... When somebody leaves, you're pretty much fucked because uh, some guy got pissed off and he left and me and Kate had to finish it by ourselves and nobody else got put in. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think the Prison of Elders so far is probably one of my funnest things. I haven't tried um, – where were we going earlier today until you realized I was 31? Trials of Osiris. Yeah, I, uh, I had sent you an invite to do Trials of Osiris, which is the PvP content that came in House of Wolves. Uh, but you were level 31, so we decided it wasn't such a hot idea. Yeah, so I'm going to hit 32 <laughs> probably later on tonight and uh, – Hopefully we can get some of that going this week. But, uh, yeah, I really I think that the Prison of Elders is a very fun addition to the game. Uh, I love the fact that every time you complete it, you're going to get something worthwhile. Uh, and uh, that's something that's keeping me and my wife coming back. So it, it's a good thing. I got two new hot pieces of armor. So once I max those out, I'll probably be at least 33. So I'm looking, I'm feeling really good about it. Excited. Nice. nice. All right, talk to me about the Elder Scrolls Online. You're playing that on PlayStation 4? PlayStation 4. I bought it the day it came out. It took me a few days to actually start playing it. Uh, Kate and I are both level 5. Count it with one hand. Level and, 5 uh, brought to you by Right Guard, Guard. Extreme uh-huh. Defense 5. <laughs> <sighs> we are not sponsored. This is not a real sponsor trip, so everyone knows. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I think we might be after this. But I don't know. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> uh, Elder Scrolls. What can I say about Elder Scrolls? Elder Scrolls Online, uh, even though they were made created by Zenimax, they weren't uh, developed in-house by Bethesda. It does feel like an Elder Scrolls game. Uh, everybody is voice acted. Uh, the controls are very reminiscent to the uh, Elder Scrolls series. Uh, there's tons of missions. You can go pretty much anywhere you want to go. I love the fact that you can just invite someone to your world and they'll spawn in there and uh, you can team up with people, you can ban people, you can uh, you can flag people. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. I'm learning it actually now. I had a good time playing it. Uh, last night, Kate and I weren't really you know in it to, to learn every aspect of it. We were more, more or less streaming for three hours and just having fun. But that's the, the good thing about it. We did have a, a lot of fun in that game, and we're actually looking forward to getting in, into it as soon as we can again. Right now it's kind of we're, we're back and forth between Destiny and that because now we're actually getting really cool stuff in Destiny and seeing these new places. and So we're really excited to do that too. So right now... Just we're just a right sponsor, Destiny, brought to you by Red Bull. Yes! <laughs> How many sponsors do we have now? Uh, one more. Astros, if you're a YouTuber, you probably got yours for free. Oh, 
Oh, um, uh, Mr. Rabbit, is there any is there any alcohol in the house today? No, no alcohol. Just oh wow, just red, just red Bull. Just, <laughs> just Red Bull. Okay, okay. <laughs> Holy hell! All right. I like the energy. I'm loving the energy. <laughs> All right, Robbie, what have you been playing this week? This week, I have basically been playing nothing but Batman Arkham Knight, and I know there's been a lot of controversy surrounding specifically the PC version, which we'll get into later, but the game is incredible. Like, just the fact, is I'm playing it on PS4, the game is absolutely amazing. I don't want to get into it too much yet. We'll talk about it later, but I am loving it so much, I can't stop playing it. It's incredible. It's just the best Batman yet, I think Batman so. Batman brought to you by NVIDIA. <laughs> Holy shit! Another sponsor, who knew? <laughs> I'm quitting my job tomorrow. <laughs> so you're enjoying the game. You're playing it on the PlayStation 4. Yes. And you're enjoying the game. You. Uh, what about the... So the. to me, there's two controversies about this game. One we'll get to later, but the one that I'm really more interested in, frankly, is the fact that they added the Batmobile in. And people hate it. People hate it. The <laughs> puzzles you, specifically. The puzzles, because the Riddler is back in this game. He has a lot of puzzles you can do. Mm-hmm. It's, I really don't like the puzzles. Other than that, like the combat, the Batmobile looks badass. It sounds super cool. I love how you can just leap off the building. You can call the Batmobile in. You dive like right down into it and just blast off. It's so much fun. The only part of the Batmobile that sucks, because every other part of it is absolutely amazing, is the Riddler puzzles. Because you literally, there's like this small ramp you're trying to drive the Batmobile up, and it's a big car. So you constantly keep falling off the side when you're doing a puzzle, and then you have to go drive back up there. It's stupid. Like, it's well, no fun. The, the controversy I think Briar is talking about, Robbie, is that a lot of people are saying that the Batmobile aspects of the game don't make you... It kind of takes you out of the experience of being Batman, where you're, you're taking out tanks and taking out you know uh, drones and things like that. Uh, and that, that's from what I'm hearing. And, and the, I like the tank combat a lot. It's just the puzzles that kind of bug me. Like every other part of the Batmobile, I loved. It is yeah. executed so well, but the puzzles are so unnecessary. And now I heard you say something else. You said this is the best Batman ever. Can I hold you to that? I really like the combat. It's the same fighting system from the other games. It feels amazing. It's a bigger open world. I mean, you have the Batmobile to drive around. Everything is dynamic. There's absolutely no loading screens in this game. You can seamlessly jump out of the Batmobile, back into it, just fly across the whole city. There is never a loading screen. It looks gorgeous. It's just the biggest, best refined Batman yet. I love this game so much. If it weren't for those puzzles, I'd probably give it a 10. Oh, okay, wow. So, uh, Briar, did you hold off on this game like me, or did you pick it up, David? No, I haven't picked it up yet. Okay. I, I didn't get it because I'm still in the middle of all these other new games. I'm, I'm like, just 20 hours in on Witcher, you know? I got <laughs> My the back catalog Brothers. is strong right now. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Totally insane. All right, so, Briar, what have you been playing this week? I've been playing a whole lot of Destiny. Uh, this weekend <laughs> I've been playing Trials of Osiris. Uh, I'm really enjoying... Uh, so far, I've gotten two characters to the lighthouse. The lighthouse is like your reward if you go undefeated uh, for nine matches, or really kind of seven. But uh, that's been fun. I've gotten two characters so far. I'm looking to get my third through. Uh, I've just been having a blast with the game. Uh, although, I, uh, as our first news story will uh, say, is I'm a little bit disappointed with the developers uh, and the publisher of Destiny. Uh, I guess we ought to just jump right into that, right? Who are you more Definitely. disappointed with, the developer or the publisher? Uh, I mean, it's kind of tough to say. but uh, <laughs> So let's briefly, let's talk about the Destiny um, controversy. I'm going to do a quick overview. Uh, I have talked about this a lot lately, so I don't want to harp on it too much because I feel like my opinions are out there. I want to hear your guys' opinions more than anything. But the quick overview is uh, E3 came out, or E3 they showed off the Taken King DLC, the expansion, $40 expansion for Destiny. They announced the pricing structure. The pricing structure was uh, not cool with a lot of people because uh, there was three SKUs basically available. Or, well, really five, but there's a $40 Taken King expansion where you just get the Taken King. There was a Legendary Edition where you get the Taken King plus all the previous Destiny content that cost $60. And then there were two Collector's Edition, one Digital Collector's Edition where you got all the stuff in the Legendary Edition plus some bonus content, which I think was three shaders, three emotes, and... There was something else in there, too, but basically just, like, uh, cosmetic items for your Guardian, stuff like that. Uh, and then there was the Retail Collector's Edition that came with everything in the Digital Collector's Edition, plus, like, a physical strange coin, some books, some posters, like, stuff like that. Uh, people were pretty upset about the pricing because uh, people who already owned Destiny in the previous two DLCs did not want to have to spend... 
the eighty dollar price tag to get the collector's edition because it already they already owned the Destiny content that was in that box, right? Uh, so yeah. they just wanted like a forty dollar version plus the collector's edition. Um, and then I think that was burning. That was you know. <laughs> That was a small fire. <laughs> the fires were laid, and then they were just waiting to be ignited, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then uh, Luke Smith, the uh, lead designer for The Taken King, did a interview with Eurogamer, Eurogamer, in which he, I would say, ignited that fire. Uh, he was asked several times about the price structure of uh, Destiny for both the U.S. and for Europe, more specifically. He was also asked about... Uh, why you had to rebuy old content to get all of the new content. And his answers were, I would say, inflammatory, uh, to say the least. So that was the second controversy. And the third controversy was brought to you by our sponsor, Red Bull. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Red Bull. <laughs> Red Bull. Yeah. Um, basically, it was revealed that you have to buy Red Bull cans and get codes off of the tabs to unlock all of the Taken King's content. Essentially, there are six missions, like a quest line, uh, that will be unlocked uh, only after you get the codes off of Red Bull cans, or you can wait till January 1st, and it will be unlocked uh, for everybody. So it was a lot of controversy. What do you guys think about it? I, You know what? Right now is the first time I heard about the, the Red Bull stuff. I think that's total bullshit. <laughs> total bullshit. I, that's hard to believe. Wow. It seems like a more of a joke than a reality. Uh, I, I read the, the interview and I was a little disheartened by, uh, what's his name? Uh, Luke, Smith. Luke Smith's words. He even went on to say, uh, if I showed you the emotes and the dance animations, you throw money at the screen. You know, it's just something crazy like that. Um, I, I think that the $40 uh, DLC alone is, is already pushing it. But when you try to edge people out and say, hey, there's going to be exclusive content, but you can only get it if you rebuy everything you had, everybody spoke up. The world got pissed off, and luckily things changed a little bit. But it's a little frustrating. Now I'm kind of wondering what they're going to do next. So I don't so think $40 is out of the question for DLC. I, th I thought that pricing was about – that's actually what I – we talked about the pricing for what we thought the pricing would be for the Taken King, and I predicted $40 for, like, the standard uh, Taken King edition and $60 for, like, a, a special edition. Yeah. Uh, well, most DLCs aren't that expensive. Like when Batman announced its, uh, its uh, season pass for $39, people talked about it because we're not used to seeing that. Um, but – when you take into account that the previous two DLCs were only 20, it kind of lays, lays the groundwork and people have an expectation at that point. This one's they, supposed to be much bigger than the pre previous two, though. Plus, you That's the real that point, is because if it's going to cost $40, which is two-thirds of the cost of a regular game, they're going to need to give you that much content. As long as they give you, like, basically twice the amount of content in House of Wolves or Dark Below, because it's twice the price, then I'm totally fine with that. It makes sense, it's a good value, and... That's all I really think of it. Yeah, as yeah. long as they give you that content that you paid for. I, I think really the the pricing, the, people were more upset about the pricing because people who have bought all of the previous uh, DLC up to this point have spent a minimum of $80 on Destiny, right? Now, uh, new people come in, they can buy all the previous content for essentially 20 bucks, right? Because they're paying $40 for the Taken King and $20 upcharge to get the Legendary Edition, which comes with all the previous content. People are pissed about that, which, frankly, uh, I don't really agree with being pissed off about that because, you know, it's old content. You know, It's going to be year old, too. The game yeah. is going to be year old by the time this comes out. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't really get that argument. What I did get was that people were pissed off that they had to rebuy the content to get the collector's edition, but Bungie has come out and fixed that. They have yep. uh, added a new SKU that's $20 to get all of the digital in-game items. People are still mad because they think that's too expensive, but it it's not going to change your gameplay experience at all if you get it or if you don't get it. It's purely cosmetic items. It is valued at about the same value as uh, competing products for other games. To me, they fixed the issue. Uh, Luke Smith came out and apologized for his interview. Um, whether you know, you what do you, what do you call yourself, Brian? What do you say? You An want? ass hat. <laughs> I just like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the Red Bull thing that still sits. You know, uh, I get honestly say I'm not super psyched about that. What do you guys think about the Red Bull thing? 
So here's the thing about the Red Bull thing. Going back to the other big Activision property, because Call of Duty has done something very similar for years, right? They've had the Mountain, Mountain Dew and Doritos, Doritos partnership where you buy bags of Doritos and bottles of Mountain Dew with codes on them, and you get things like double XP in-game and in-game items, and that's fine because that's very small optional things. That's fine if you want to buy those extra items and to get that stuff, that's great. But locking off like actual in-game quests and missions to this whole Red Bull thing, that's the part I'm not happy about. The other like XP boosts, that's fine. Like that's not a big deal. That's kind of optional. That's conventional. You don't have to do that. This feels like it's more forced though. Like if you want these missions, you're gonna have to go buy some Red Bull and I'm not super happy about that. That's the yeah. tipping point for me. Like well, it doesn't infuriate me. But it it leaves a but sour it's like, taste come in my on, mouth. Really? Yeah, it's like really got a real oh. sour taste in my mouth right now. Yeah. <laughs> Stop drinking that Red Bull. <laughs> hey, Briar already Ooh, bought his Briar. fucking Red Bull. Briar, he bought his already. He checked Traitor. those codes, Briar. <laughs> well, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not a big Red Bull drinker, um, and there's probably a lot of gamers who do drink it, and some people who don't. I guess it's up to your discretion whether or not you're willing to go out there and and support Red Bull in this little business endeavor that they're doing with Destiny. I'll probably just wait, you know, as far as that goes until, uh, Jan you said January, right? January 1st, yeah. Yeah, I can wait till the, the first of the year. I I'm not going to be out there searching for codes. How pissed off would you be if you bought some Red Bull and you kept getting the same code? Yeah, you right. Pissed off? For, like, the XP boost? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> The exact on. same code over for the same mission every time? How pissed off would you be? I go... Three cases of Red Bull and I got one fucking mission. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. Yeah, at least it, it is like a um a timed exclusive, so eventually this is going to be available for everyone. Like if it were permanent, that would be really bad. At or, least this or, is just for a short time. Or they could do it this way: they could create special six pack editions of Red Bull that have one code per can for all six missions. You buy it once you're in, rather than have to keep going out and buying and hopefully you get lucky, but. I don't even know how this works, basically. It may be that the first code you put in automatically gets you the mission, and then every code you put in after that gets you XP boosts. I, in all fairness, I haven't tried it yet myself, uh, so I can't really tell you how it works. Right. I think it's probably going to be you just have to get lucky that you get the quest line. Some codes are going to be the XP boosts. Some are going to be the quest line. I don't know if that's the whole quest line or if it's, like, one quest per code. Well, yeah, we don't, don't know. know. All right, so, uh, so, yeah, I mean, people are really pissed off at Bungie and Activision right now. <laughs> yeah, well, you ain't talked about it if you ain't thought about it. Uh, okay, guys, so continuing on with the news away from Destiny a little bit, there was a fantastic AAA title that came out for a very well-known console called the Wii U. This game was called Zombie U. And, uh, it Brought was to you by Right Guard. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> of course. Of course it was. And uh, I think Ubisoft was behind this game, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, the game was actually a pretty decent game, a survival horror game for the Nintendo Wii U. And there's been rumblings about this game actually being ported to other consoles. And our top story says that Zombie U listing appears for the Xbox One. Robbie, you want to elaborate on this a little bit? Because I heard uh, rumors that this is actually going to PS4 and Xbox One, and they were just going to drop the U in the name and call it Zombie. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what the listing says. It says zombie, like without the E. It only lists Xbox One for now. I'm sure it'll come to PS4, but, you know, if it's the same game, like I already played it on the Wii U when it first came out. I really like that game a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's like a different kind of take on the zombie apocalypse. Like it's really slow paced. You have very little ammo. It was a great game, but I don't know if I'd replay it again. I hope this is going to be like a sequel, but we'll have to see. All right. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Batman, because I feel like that's the other big news story of the week. Definitely. Uh, Robbie, why don't you fill us in on what's going on with Batman Arkham... Is it Arkham what is it called? Arkham Knight. It's called right? Arkham, Arkham Basement. Knight. <laughs> Old man. Arkham, Arkham Basement. Continent. <laughs> You've been drinking one too many Red Bulls, I can tell. <laughs> All right, so Batman Arkham Knight obviously came out this week. It is by the same developer, Rocksteady, who made Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum. Too. Very beloved games. They were incredible games. This game is incredible, too, on consoles, but on PC, it's a very, very different situation. So it's had a very rocky launch on PC this week. Everything from FPS drops to the textures not looking very good, like the graphics just not rendering in properly. This port is a complete mess. Even on the highest-end PCs, it barely runs, and it doesn't even look 
as good as the console versions in some cases, which is completely unacceptable to me. Well, I think it's unacceptable to a lot, and that's probably why they took it off store shelves and uh, they suspended sales for the PC version of the game. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about this Batman Arkham uh, Arkham Knight fiasco and talking about the pre-orders. You know, why do people pre-order games before you get them? And then uh, once you get your hands on them, you got a situation like this. I think it would be a really big outcry if this, the same thing happened on consoles. Luckily for us, uh, Rocksteady didn't port the PC version. They actually did the, uh, the console versions of the game. But if it was that kind of situation, how would you guys feel about pre-ordering in the future? I mean... I guess it all depends on what you're going to get. That's really the big fiasco that people are upset about. You know, spending all your money on a game before you actually have it in-house and see exactly what you're going to get, whether it works or not. And I know that the PC version is shit. I saw it. I actually looked up some videos of it. I was like, holy shit, it's not the same on consoles, is it? it was, it's really unfortunate. Uh, it's unfortunate for everybody out there on a the PC who has the game. Uh, and uh, hopefully they get it fixed soon because you can't even buy it on PC right now. Well, I'll tell you what. You're, you're hitting me where I hurt right now because in the last week or so, I've pre-ordered two collector's editions of games. Uh, I'm sitting here drinking Red Bull because I want to get <laughs> I want to get the stupid code so I can play all of the Taken King when it comes out. I'm pimping right guard just because I'm in a pissy mood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But, I, I mean, the Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 uh, collector's edition was announced, right, and the thing comes with a goddamn pit boy. Pit boy. <laughs> of course, I want a pit boy. <laughs> so of course, I pre-ordered it because there's no way you're gonna get that thing at retail. Uh, I I pre-ordered the Destiny Taken King uh, Collector's Edition because I want a strange coin and you know, I, it sucks, man. Like it's it's a bummer that these things are like uh, so limited in release. They're so hard to obtain. You're forced to pre-order. Uh, if you want to get them. And then if the game comes out, you know, like, imagine if the PlayStation 4 version of Arkham Knight was as bad as the PC version. You know, they had a pre-order uh, PlayStation 4. I mean, like, with the Batman logo on it. Yeah. How pissed would you be if you spent that kind of money? Extremely yes. pissed. But there's not much we can do. <clears throat> the current state of things, unless we all as a group decide to stop doing pre-orders, there's not much we can do about it. It's just yeah. going to keep going on. And the worst part about this, too, is that the con like the console versions are amazing. They're made by Rock City. They are yeah. naturally developed. Like, the game is incredible. The game itself is amazing. Buy it on consoles. It is a phenomenal game. I cannot recommend it enough. This is, like, the biggest, best Batman yet. But on PC, it was developed by Iron Galaxy, so they ported it, essentially. And it's such a poor port. Like, like I said, it runs terrible. Like, the frame rate is all over the place. It's just so unstable. It crashes a lot. I've seen it crash like crazy. I feel terrible for PC fans because you spend a lot of money on high-end PCs, like thousands of dollars to have high-end performance. That's what you'd expect. And then you get all these shoddy ports like this, and it's unacceptable. I feel terrible for you guys. Like, I really do. It's not it's fair at all. It's a really, really bad time to be a PC elitist. Yeah, and then there's also kind of the side controversy that apparently NVIDIA used a video of the PC version to try and pimp some of their products. Running it at 60 up frames. The footage. They sped up the footage so it looked better than it does. <laughs> yeah, and there's a 30 FPS lock, track. too. Which you is can really hear cool. the background, the, like the guys uh, in the background going, hey, like chipmunks because it's sped up, you know? <laughs> 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 Didn't Microsoft just do some shit like this? I and mean, I know they saw it in the news. Come on, man. Where's your ethics at? Yeah. Oh, just, just making yourself look even worse. Man. Good on Steam for pulling it, I guess, right? Yeah. I mean, but they were getting hard with those uh, those tickets for refunds, man. People didn't want to spend their money for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and it's good that they outspoke, too, because this is unacceptable. You shouldn't have to live with this. This is terrible. Well, they should I not be able to serve a game like this. Unfortunately, guys, and Briar, I'm sure you'll agree, this is going to become more and more prevalent as time passes on. Development is so different now than it was 10, 20 years ago. Now you can create a game, and, and in house, you can say, well, if we have an issue, we can patch it. Yeah. If there's a small issue, we can patch it. And so a small issue might not be small, but it might look small. Once it hits the world, it'll be a big issue. And then here you are trying to patch it, trying to 
update it. And, uh, I mean, nothing is ever finished once it leaves the studio anymore. Ever. Yeah. Well, what are the issues to do is if a team gets limited development money to pour the game over, you know, testing is a big part of that, right? Is they gotta they gotta test this game to find the bugs. And if they have limited amount of money and resources to actually develop this game, maybe they just decided, well, we just don't have time to test this or we don't have the resources to test it as thoroughly as we should. I don't know, it's hard to say, but it's it's a bad situation. I, I feel bad for PC gamers who bought it. Uh, ho- hopefully they got it on Steam and you can get a refund. Uh, but it's definitely not acceptable. Yeah, yeah, at least, like they said, they're going to put it back up once all the issues have been fixed out and it's in a playable state. But, come on, you shouldn't have released this. It was clearly not ready. Like, this, yeah, that, that's the thing that really pisses me off, though. A, a game like the PC port, there's no way in hell they should have released that. I mean, no. it had so many issues. Why would you even release it knowing what's going to happen? You know there's going to be a backlash rather than just postpone the launch. That yeah. kind of blows my mind that they can release a game in that state and expect, well, they couldn't have expected people to be okay with it. They just released it, and it, look what happened. It's a huge backlash. Hopefully somebody out there in the development world will learn from this. If you guys are having issues making a game, hold on to it rather than put it out in the world and stymie it, and people automatically will have a negative outlook on your on your development studio from that point on. Just do it right or don't do it at all. Yeah. This bug report of the week is brought to you by Right Guard because your shit stinks. Damn right. <laughs> All right, what else we got for Steve? So, a, a one terabyte PlayStation 4 has gotten a release date. Robbie, what's that release date? I'm sure in you know what I think it is July 15th in the um, in Europe and Australia, and I think it's soon to fall in North America. You guys excited about this? Has it even no. been announced in North America yet? No, but it's coming, it's I think, It's been confirmed, August. but they haven't announced any release dates. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not excited about it at all. I think uh, one terabyte is really nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean... Honestly, I can fill one terabyte with music. I mean, uh, it is what it is. But for me now, with my PlayStation 4 or my Xbox One, I usually have about six or seven games I'm actively playing on it and like 30 games I need to download anytime I want to change them. And until they give us at least a four terabyte, at least a three terabyte system, I don't think a one terabyte is going to make that much of a difference compared to a 500 gig. I don't know if they can do three terabyte. I think they use laptop size drives, right? The two and a half inch drives. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think those are available in three terabyte yet. I so they're, they're, Chat, help me out here. Can you get a two I and a half inch drive? Think they, I think they are, but they're pretty new. I'm pretty yeah. sure they have them now. Okay. Mm. Well, if they're new, they're expensive. So t- two terabyte would be good. One terabyte is a little low. Yeah, yeah definitely. I or just upgrade your hard drive, you know? Yeah. I I think there's no reason to upgrade to a t- to a one terabyte drive. Uh, if you currently have a PlayStation, just go out and buy a two terabyte drive. Put it in yourself. Yeah, I agree. All right, so this next bit of news I know makes Robbie excited. Out in Canada, this is like it's like Christmas when they hear this. Evolve, yeah, yeah Evolve is getting a second season pass, and it's available now. Robbie, are you going to go spend your money now? I know your your wall is burning a hole in your hand right now. Let's... Am I going to spend money on this? Hell. No, because the original game is such crap. Like, don't buy this. Just don't buy this. I can't believe they're doing another season pass. As soon as I saw this news, I'm like, are you kidding me? They're going back for more? I mean, the worst part about this is the game came out of the gate. It was already lacking so much content. It was not worth $60. Then they do the whole season pass, which is not worth it. And now they're doing another one. And you sell all these skin packs? Like, are you kidding me? You know your product is shit, and you know no one bought it. That's why you're having to do another season pass, because your game was crap, and no one bought it. So now you have to live with it. Too freaking bad. Tell us how you really feel, Randy. That's, you, that's your fault, 2K. You're in this now. So no one is going to buy this, because your product is shit, and you know it's shit. Too well, it's bad. A, it's a I got to do Robbie here. I mean, I, I think he nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to disagree. I, I, like play, to I, much, I haven't but... played... I haven't played Evolve since we played Evolve, guys. So, I mean, it's not even installed on my PS4 anymore, unfortunately, for them. I don't like but, to swear that much, but this is just... Come bullshit. on. Bullshit. This go. is pathetic. This is pathetic. They, uh, they said that uh, Evolve is a legacy title from this point on, so they're planning on uh, supporting it and, and making, uh, you know, part two, part three. They want to make this into an actual franchise. Are you guys, you guys think that could possibly work if they do something different with the next one? 
A real single player at campaign. At least they need a campaign. Yeah, they need a campaign mode, kind of like with Titanfall. Why that game just didn't last. It didn't have a campaign, but more importantly, it didn't have enough content. There wasn't enough meat on the bone. There weren't enough weapons. There wasn't enough. There wasn't a reason to keep leveling up. Like they just missed the mark. And with Evolve, they're just going to need to have far more content. I hope it's just they just do something different because Evolve is not a good game. It really isn't. It, it's such a cool concept. I was so excited for it, and then it came out, and it's so disappointing. Exactly. I was so looking forward to it. It looked fresh. It looked fun. It looked like a super fun game. I mean, one monster against four of your friends. How could that be disappointing? It should be like a ton of fun. It really wasn't. It got boring pretty quick. All right, so the next story I'm a little confused about, and I'm going to tell you how I feel when I read it. It says, there's, <laughs> there's no developer currently working on Phantom Dust Reboot. Now, if you think about that for a minute, it's like there's no developer working on any other games that are in development either. So how is this news? I'm just curious about this. It's like saying there's no developer working on the Mario reboot because there isn't one. No one's working on it. I think it just shows that this game is never coming out. I mean, from the moment it announced, I was like, wait, what is this? Like, I was just very confused. It seems like a game that honestly would sell, like, two copies. Like, I don't even know why Microsoft even bothered to give the green light on this, and then they just canceled, or no, they shut down the developer, Dark Side Games, I think it was. So. Call it what it is. That's a cancel. Come on, this game is not coming out. Phil Spencer says it still is. There's no way it's coming out. You don't even have a developer on this. You canceled, you shut down the developer. Like, this is not happening. There's no way. Yeah, I, I don't care no, about that. Good news? Talk about yes. something fun? Something happy? Yeah. I'm All ready that for maybe? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fallout 4 is going to be 1080p, 30 frames per second on PS4, Xbox One, and PC is not going to be frame rate locked or resolution locked. Whew. Praise the Lord on this one. Yes. You guys happy? I mean, 1080p, 30 frames per second. It'd be nice to see 60 frames per second, but let's be honest, it's not a competitive shooter. 30 frames per second is probably fine. A huge uh, open world not like that, though. Resolution is... lock or. Um, or uh, frames per second lock on the PC. That's great news. Yeah, yeah as I mean, long as it doesn't like drop below 30 frames per second, I'm fine with that because 30 is just fine on consoles. So yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's not going to require insane stats on your PC. But um, I also don't want it to not require anything. You know, I'd like it to be, you know, look pretty good on a PC. Yeah, I mean, I think this game on. Are you going to go PS4, Xbox One, or PC? PS4. Yeah, I mean that's Xbox what I One is the lead platform for this. You might as well. That's what well, I'm doing anyways. But. I, I don't know. I mean, they've already expressed that they would like to uh, port or give the PS4 the ability to play those uh, mods as well. So if they confirm that, I'll probably grab it on PS4. But as of right now, I did say it at E3. I'll have to grab it on Xbox One for those mods. That's just something you don't see in the console space. And I'm yeah, willing to pay, pay cool. to have that. That to me, that's really awesome. Um, but I think 30 frames per second is fine with a game like this. I mean, Destiny works fine at 30 frames per second, and it's a it has a competitive multiplayer side. So I, I don't mean, get I mean, the big deal about 60 FPS. Everybody says like, oh, 30 FPS sucks. And so are you kidding me? 30 frames is fine. What is wrong with 30 frames? Like it runs smooth. It looks great. I don't get it. I, I know Briar's got something to say. Go ahead. Bro. Yeah, I I I I like 60 frames per second. Uh, I think the difference between something like Destiny and Call of Duty. Uh, it's pretty apparent when I when I switched from Call of Duty to Destiny, I could definitely see the difference. Uh, that it was just it was just a little choppier, like uh, when you're at close range combat and there's guys blink trumping around you. Uh, sometimes you just the frame that was crucial for you to know where that guy went <laughs> is <just> not there. <laughs> you know, uh, so the, that smoother that smoother experience with 60 frames per second, I think, makes a big difference for competitive shooters. Uh, I'd love to see Destiny 2 be 60 frames per second. I don't know if they'll make that decision. That's a tough decision to make. Do we go with uh, better visuals or faster visuals, you know? I think that's a good point. I think, really, yeah, 60 frames per second is perfect for competitive shooters like Call of Duty. That's why it's been so successful is because it's so fast-paced and it feels great to play and it's just it just works perfectly. It works. Destiny is 30 frames. I mean, it's fine, but yeah, 60 frames. It could. It probably would be even better. So. Right. Are you a Jedi? I think I feel like you just did this to Robbie. 
60 frames is fine. <laughs> right. I mean, oh, I like 60 frames. I never said 60 frames is bad. I mean, 60 frames is great if you can achieve it, but everybody yeah. complains about 30. Like, what is wrong with 30? 30 is great. It all depends on the type it. of game. I think it all depends on the type of game. A game like if Fallout... It's not a shooter. You don't need 60. Like, well, Fall, Fallout, Fallout is a shooter at heart. It's a first-person experience, but it doesn't require you to be going against other people. It's, going it's against not people. multiplayer, so it's fine at 30, and it's a huge open-world game. That's going to be 30. Of course and it I, is. I think Destiny proved that 30, 30 frames is fine for certain types of multiplayer. Yeah. I, you know, think. I think they built that around that speed, and it works perfectly. Yeah. All right. So you want to go to the next story? Sure. Who? Uh, Project Cars 2 announced. Yeah, even though it just came out, I was like, okay, haven't played the first one, don't really care for that kind of racing game, so oh. great, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. All right, file that one under who gives a shit. <laughs> Warner Brothers suspends sales of Arkham Knight. We already did that one. Another World War II Call of Duty game is certainly possible, according to the CEO of Activision. This is very interesting to me. Yeah. Um, saying it's possible and saying it's in development are two different things, but the fact that they're even talking about it, I think, is a good thing for those people who really want to see uh, an, a return to World War II. World War II is a fun place to do a multiplayer shooter. And we haven't seen that environment in this this generation of gaming. No, I would, good to see. See, I would love to see a World War II environment on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or PC now. That would yeah. be stunning to see. Um, and you know that conversation is on the table there at Activision. You know someone in house is talking about bringing that that element of Call of Duty back. You know, and there's lots of gamers out here who want to see it as well. So. Yeah, I mean, look at how many people were talking about World at War Two before we knew it was going to be Black Ops Three. You know, yeah, a ton of conversation about that. A lot of excitement. Um, I, the the market was flooded with World War Two shooters in I'd say like two two thousand to two thousand five. That sounded about right. Yeah, I mean, just flooded. Like everybody was making World War Two shooters. EA yeah, we're trying Activision. to chase Call of Duty. Yeah, well, Call of Duty came from EA. Yeah, Medal of Honor. You know, it was just every company was making uh, World War II shooters. A lot of them were a lot of fun. Call of Duty started off as World War II shooters, and Modern Warfare kind of switched that up. Uh, and then they went back to it with World at War, and then uh, they kind of never looked back once they uh, released Modern Warfare 2. And then Black Ops 2 started the whole futuristic thing, so... Yeah, but I, know, I'll be honest with you, I was sick of World War II shooters. How many times I, I stormed the beach on Normandy... I can't hmm. count. <laughs> I can't this, count. Yeah. this this is off the subject, but I don't see it in our news. Uh, did you guys get a chance to download and try the PlayStation Plus version of Drive Club? That's in the news. No. That's the next story. I, oh, I did. I did have the chance to do it. I just chose not to. <laughs> I downloaded. <laughs> it. Come on. Man. Yeah, I, I went on, that I went insult on. was brought to you by Right Guard because your shit stinks too. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Of course. Oh, that's awesome, bro. <laughs> uh, I went on and downloaded it and uh, played around with it. It's it's a nice free game, and, and I'm happy to see they actually lived up to it and, and released it. For a long time, I didn't think we were going to get it. It's like you guys have the relative that gives you a call in February, and you say, hey, how you doing? And she says, I'm fine. Uh, I just want you to know that the mail is coming to your house now. It's for Christmas. <laughs> and it's February... This is that late aunt sending us a fucking gift. <laughs> and so it's uh, something I played, let my kids play around with it. I, I, I kind of liked it. Yeah. I'm yeah. shocked that this didn't get canceled. Like, it just, it took so long. I can't, like, Sony could have easily been like, this is not important. No one cares about this clearly. We can just kind of forget about it. I'm have amazed learned, that it actually came out. Shuhei Yoshida doesn't cancel shit. Haven't you <laughs> learned from uh, The Last Guardian? They ain't canceling nothing. That's true. Ever. <laughs> After the last Guardian is still coming, like that was unbelievable. They won't. They won't cancel a damn thing. I mean, I played Drive Club for a little bit the other day. I was like, this is fun. It's a really good racing game, but I'm not super into racing games. So I was like, eh. I played it for like 20 minutes. I was like, I'm kind of done with this. How the hell did I miss that? That really was our next story too. That's so foolish of me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Treyarch T's. Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 3 Zombies. What do you guys think about this? you guys get a chance to see it at all? They haven't. Well, they haven't officially shown it yet. It's coming July 9th, I want to say, at Comic-Con. They're going to debut Zombies. And I'm... Man, I love Black Ops Zombies. I can't wait to see this. 
especially how they're going to incorporate like the thrust jumping and the wall running with this. I'm super excited to see it. I really want to see what this is like. Let me just say this. I think that the way Black Ops 2 did zombies is so much better than the more modern zombies. I think Advanced Warfare zombies is really subpar compared to Black Ops 2's. Um, it was just okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just one place you play it over and over and over again, and it just didn't excite me at all. And I'm, I'm really happy to see what Treyarch does. Yeah, I don't really play zombies, so you know, whatever you guys think is okay by me. <laughs> <laughs> I love zombies, so I'm super excited about this. I can't wait to see it. Everything right, I've so, seen in Black Ops Three so far is very positive. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think this is going to be the one. You know, I, I'm. I really feel that way. It's been so long since I felt this way. I know they're taking a lot from these more modern uh, Black o- Call of Duty games, but they are the developer for me. They're the one. As long as it's really not Advanced play. Warfare, I'll be happy because that game lost me. I just I, couldn't get into it. I can't speak badly about Advanced Warfare right now because my wife is fucking loving it. She still loves that game. We were actually watching a live stream of somebody playing Ghost today, and she said, find Advanced Warfare. I said, oh, no. <laughs> um <laughs> so she really likes that game. She still plays it a lot. But um, I'm really looking forward to Black Ops 3. I think Black Ops 2 is, as I mentioned before, my favorite. I got into Call of Duty late, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next. I, I like their level design. It's so spot on for me. Uh, I know Briar doesn't like that net code, but hopefully they work on it a little bit. Other than the net code, though, that game is amazing. That and Modern Warfare 2 are my favorites. I, I love both those games so much. I just remember Modern Warfare 2 back in the day. That was... Amazing. That game was incredible. Yeah. Hashtag R.I.P. Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I know you like Ghosts, Brian. I do. That's what I'm saying. Rip. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sadly. So, the the last little bit of news we got. Bethesda is unsure about holding any more E3 press conferences, guys. Uh, I'm not really surprised about this. What are you guys' thoughts on it? I think... Uh, this conference this year kind of seemed like a one-off, didn't they? Like, they had enough news. They had Fallout 4. They had Doom. Like, they had enough this year to be like, okay, let's hold an E3 conference. Let's blow everybody away. Let's just fill our show fill our show with Fallout 4. That's all we need to do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't see them holding another conference uh, for next year, and that's just fine because this conference was amazing this year. I think they did a phenomenal job. They did show a ton of games, but what they showed was really, really good. Whenever they have enough to show for a conference, I'm looking forward to it. I like that they're going to take their time and just kind of come back and be like, hey, check this out. Yeah, I think I think they did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed their conference. And I agree. I, I think that it's a, a one-off type of situation. They had uh, Doom. They had Fallout. They could have really just focused on Fallout alone, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I, I think that you know history tells us that they don't really release a ton of games every year, and I think the time was right for them to show uh, you know, a lot of games to get people excited about them. Uh, just be, be looking for Valve's E3 conference until Half-Life 3 comes out. So mm. you all know when that happens, that's what we're going to be expecting. 2027. Mark it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, like, it was cool to see them do one. You know, maybe if they get, like, a, another kind of confluence of big titles coming out all at the same time, we'll see them do it again. Like, maybe Elder Scrolls or something like that. Elder Scrolls 6 and something three, else. four years. Yeah. But, oh, I, yeah, Fallout 4, Doom, and Dishonored. That's some. That's a big lineup for one company, and I think they did an awesome job. Like BC said, they they knocked it out of the park. They got people really excited for all three of those games. Who would have thought we'd be excited for another Doom game? Oh, God. Yeah. It looked Fallout amazing. Fallout 4, everybody knew that, but Doom? God. <laughs> that's gonna, that snap map thing, I can't wait to play with that. Oh, my God. I think Doom was just the perfect way to bring back like an old franchise into the modern era. Like it's really just like modernizing it for this day and age. It looked it, like it looked perfect. That's how you bring back Doom. That was really good. Yeah, Bro, it you, looked like you, a lot of fun. Bro, you mentioned Dishonored. I wasn't really excited for that. They just showed a lot of CG. I wanted to see some gameplay. And it's freaking Dishonored. The first one was so good. I know. I love that game. But I want to see gameplay. Me they too. Needed, yeah, they need to do what Horizon Zero Dawn did. Show me what the game is is all about. You know, if they showed us a, tra- a, a CG tra- trailer of a game like um, Horizon, we'd be like, okay, it's a new game. But they showed us that shit, and everybody went ape shit because you actually saw what the real game was all about. I want to see what new changes they made to this sound. I want to see how the world looks on the PS4 and the Xbox One compared to how it looked last gen. I want to be excited about that. Yeah, new I think gen it'll be a good, I mean, I think I think it'll be a good game. But you know, I think that when you like Assassin's Creed, when they show all these CG trailers, it it's kind of 
I won't say disingenuous because people know it's a CG, but I'd prefer to see actual in-game stuff, you know? Mm. And that's just my personal taste, my personal preference. I'm with you. I, I hear you, but still, I mean, they it was kind of its announcement, you know, even though it had leaked earlier. And it was cool to see that logo come up on the screen. Uh, Doom and Fallout 4, the huge, that huge demo for Fallout 4 blew everybody's socks off. I mean, yeah, people I'm are still just on. so amped for that game. I've they watched that demo so a few times, actually, too. <laughs> Me too, because there was so much. There was the whole tower defense and building your own shelters, and then Fallout Shelter, too, that, oh. that it was available now. That mm. was so cool. I still want to play that game. I don't have uh, iOS, unfortunately. but mm. You made yeah. poor choices, huh? Kate plays that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Briar. Whatever, man. I like Android just fine, so I'll stick with it. <laughs> God damn. Oh, there's no doubt. Android is better than iOS. You guys want to hear an awful story? Yeah. So, uh, Planet Destiny, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to start streaming uh, on their Twitch channel. And uh, they have, you know, special software that they wanted me to use, but unfortunately it's Windows only. <laughs> so I actually had to install Windows 8 <laughs> on my Mac. Yes. You're slowly a single tier. <laughs> <laughs> And slowly, whatever the button, you're like, ah, oh, your fingers just slowly descend on the button. I'm like, I gotta click it, I gotta click it. You're like, I the it. first part. The first part was I had to pay a hundred something dollars to buy Windows, <laughs> right? That sucked. The second part was I bought it, and then I realized you can't just download an ISO. I actually had to find a a PC that runs Windows to get an ISO. So I had to jump through hoops just to be able to install it. <laughs> just to yeah, install just, Windows 8, the best operating system out there. You can't, yeah, you can't just download the stuff you need to install it. You have to, you know, jump through Microsoft's hoops to do it. Uh, and then, oh, just, oh. Are, are, are you pleased with your Windows 8 experience, Brian? No, it's terrible. It's such a stupid operating system. And Windows 10 <laughs> comes out in like a month. And I couldn't wait. I couldn't just wait. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was so I gotta say I was pleasantly surprised yesterday. I got a pop up on my PC and it said you uh, are eligible for the Windows 10 update. Yeah, Click I got here. that too. An hour after I bought Windows 8. <laughs> oh, I don't have that. Guys, I nope. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll, it'll come. come. It'll come. Yeah. Don't worry. Windows is coming. Windows. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> What else we got? Anything else we want to talk about today? Any uh, games you guys are looking forward to? They're coming up soon. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all about fall at this point. I'm just waiting for the fall to come. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the Taken King. I'm really looking forward to Fallout 4. I, those are the, my two big ones. Uh, yeah. And then next year, I'm really looking forward to uh, the Division. I think it's you... going to be pretty quiet until September. Like in August, we got Until Dawn and a couple other small games, but then we got Metal Gear September 1st and Mad Max, and then we get into October, and we got like Halo, and we got like Forza 6 and mm -hmm. uh, Call of Duty. And we got... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll probably yeah. pick it up. I... I'll, I'll have to buy that. Um... I love the beta. The multiplayer is really, really good. I, really I got a question good. for you, though, Briar. The Witcher's come and gone. You didn't mm -hmm. try that. Batman's here. Are you yeah. planning on trying any of these games, or are you just going to hold off until... Batman. I want to see what he thinks. I mean, I'm going to wait for a little bit, because I still got... I got Witcher to play. I still haven't played Dragon Age. I still haven't played Shadows of Mordor. You know, I got all these games just sitting here waiting on me. I'm playing, um, you know, this new Elder Scrolls online. It's just really hard to commit. I feel like I'm cheating on my wife with, like, six women right in front of her. It's like, I want to <laughs> commit to one game... But I'm surrounded by all these games. I want to play them all. It's just so hard. I want to get. I want to get The Witcher. Uh, I want to hear that that movement thing is fixed though before I get into it. I don't think that's going to happen, buddy. Yeah, I might just <laughs> skip by it then because there's so much good stuff out there that like, I know everybody's talking about how good this game is, but they always say except that you can't move. <laughs> I really didn't. Yeah, that was so. Well, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, it's got this great open world, except you walk like an idiot. The combat sucks. <laughs> I was so excited for The Witcher 3. I really was I think I think I the combat's like... amazing, man. I, I, you got to take that back, Robbie. We're going to have to fight. I didn't, I didn't like The Witcher 3. I thought I was going to love it. It just felt clunky. It was the world. Like, I just didn't get immersed in it. I didn't. 
I was bored. I was like, within the first couple hours, I was like, this is just boring to me. Yeah, and that's the narrative I'm excited. hearing, Robbie, is that, like, yeah, I loved it once I got past the fact that it controls like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can look sections. past the fact that it's a crappy game. It's a great game. <laughs> the opening area was pretty boring, too. Like, once you got past that, it got better, but I, was, I didn't play it long. I was like, I just I can't get into this. Well, th- there are two aspects of the movement that really do suck. Riding your horse really does suck. When you get on Roach and you start going someplace and Roach just veers off by himself, the game has this, this new system where the, your horse will stay on a path. Mm-hmm. So if you're riding straight through the woods and a path comes up, your horse says, ooh, I guess I'll go that way, and it'll get on the path and you're not going the direction you want, so you constantly have to write your horse. That's one thing I don't like, and I don't like the certain aspects of the movement. Let me just say it that way. I think the combat's amazing. I think the environment's amazing. I think the story is amazing. Uh, and those are, like, my only things I'll say about it. My buddy Justin, 95 Gamers, you guys check out his channel. He, uh, We talked about this a few days ago, you know, and he left me some messages, and he said, hold up on Batman. You already got the game of the year. Mm-hmm. Witcher 3 is a Batman's shit. Batman's 10 times. No, nope, Batman's way He said, better. Witcher 3 is a Batman. shit. He said, you're not going to play nothing better than Witcher 3 this year. So I guess I'll be the judge when I do pick up Batman, and it won't be too too uh, so too late from now. Well, what's, what am I looking to say? It won't be too long from now when I pick up Batman, and um, I guess I'll be able to judge it then. I haven't watched any trailers. I haven't like Even when they showed the stuff at E3, I didn't want to see it. Um, I haven't seen any gameplays. Everybody's streaming it right now. Uh, so I'm just going to hold off so I can have my full, robust experience in that game when I finally throw it in my PS4. That's great. That's and always that's a good idea. strong over here. I still haven't finished Ori and the Blind Forest, which is driving me crazy because I me love either. that game. Me either. Yeah, there's so many games. Guys, I still have an unopened copy. <laughs> Uh, what the hell is that game called? Far you, don't, you don't even know it. Unopened. You don't even know what the game is. It's so good, though. I haven't Far had it. So One day you will open it, Briar Rabbit, and we will do two-player co-op for the whole game. It'll be tell fun. You what, tell you what, Briar, you, you open that game, and I'll buy that game. We'll play it together. We'll uh, run around I, hunting I, I've rhinos. I've never played it. Driving wild elephants. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. But, I mean, the fall is going to be huge, so. God, it's over, Briar. We, we'll the never fall get to these games. Out. You can you can just wipe them out. Or in the blind forest, The Witcher for me, Dragon Age. all summer. But there are going to be games coming out this summer. It's over. You guys, it's over. Th- this Why fall. Why do you got to be all doom and gloom, man? I'm just keeping it real, brother. I gotta throw salt in my game. I'm keeping it real. <laughs> shit. We ain't gonna never get to this shit. It's over, man. <laughs> or in the blind forest, it's over, cuz. Never be able to play this shit. Damn it. Uh, I don't know, man. Like all weekend long, all I want to do is play Trials of Osiris because it's like yeah. my favorite thing to do now. You know, I just love that with competitive. The last I can't help it. What's that? It's done the same way with The Last of Us. Yeah. I know you guys aren't into it, but it's like the best thing ever. I'm like, oh god, this is like half as good as sex. Um, and and I play it and I just enjoy it so much. And I talk to these people playing it and we have so much fun. And it's like I got other games are like, please play me. I'm like, fuck you. I'm playing this. <laughs> I know you feel the same way when you play Destiny. We'll yeah. never get to those games, Briar. Ever. It'll, it'll never wah, happen. Wah, wah, wah. We'll have to. We'll have to get Robbie's opinion every week. <laughs> <laughs> so what's new? You guys should really start playing more games so I can talk about them with you. Like I feel alone. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, All right. So, All right. We got anything else? We want to wrap it up. Yeah, we can wrap it up. Robbie just gives, so. he quits games like The Witcher 3. He quits them. I won't say I'll quit it. I just take I do quit. not quit games. I didn't like it. I couldn't get into it. It's a great game. I just couldn't get into it. Oh, that uh, makes sense. You quit it kind of guy is what you're saying? Yeah, you hear him? I couldn't get into it. <laughs> what you working with I over there in Canada, bro? Show's <laughs> over, okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm done. This conversation about Robbie's sex life brought to you by Right 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I think that's gonna do I'm it. Done. Everybody want to top? Pimp out what they got coming. I'm up done. This week. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, hey, Robbie. You need a hug, man. You need a <laughs> I need a lot more than a hug right now. <laughs> this show has gone off the look, rails. Mario can show you how to do it, Robbie. Look. All right, Beasley. What do you got coming up this week? What are you excited about? Ah, oh, man. I'm gonna be doing some streaming. Uh, hopefully, I'll at least get to like. Level 10 or 15 in uh, ESL, Elder Scrolls Online. On Twitch? Are you streaming on Twitch? Yeah. Well, what the hell, mate? you got to link that up to your Twitter so I can find out about it. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the description of all my videos. It's uh, 
twitch.tv forward slash thebeastlygamer12. Yeah, but link it to your Twitter so I know when you're going to do it so I can come and watch. <laughs> so I don't have to just leave your Twitch page open all the time, hoping that you're going to sign on. No, no. I, I, <laughs> usually, I usually make a video and post it on my YouTube channel first. Okay. Then I go in. But, yeah, I'll definitely do that. All right. Robbie, what are you excited about this week? You need to learn how to get it. Um, I don't know. I think finally this week I'm going to set up the Beastie Thoughts Twitch account because we've been talking about that a lot. I think we all should right. start streaming on there, get that prepared. I'll be making videos probably this week on whatever big news comes out. That's what I'm kind of doing now. So, yeah, that's really about it. Great. Uh, I'll be playing some Destiny. I'm looking forward to getting some Trials of Cyrus going. I'll be streaming on the Planet Destiny uh, Twitch this week, so look forward to that. I'll tweet Don't you. Don't forget to be available. drinking your Red Bull, too, to get that. Yeah, uh, I'll be drinking my Red Bull, uh, showered in my right guard. <laughs> Mario wants to say something. All right. And there's our copyright infringement right there. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next episode. This show went off the rails. Bye, guys.